So now that we have done our palpebral nerve block and we can easily see the whole eye, uh, this is where we do our detailed external and surface ocular examination, which is very, very important in the horse. See a lot of surface ocular disease, tumors, uh, foreign bodies, corneal disease. Uh, this is a very, very important aspect of equine ophthalmology. The best instrument to use for the detailed examination would be the slit lamp biomicroscope. This is a portable slit lamp. Some people call it a pediatric slit lamp because it is used in little children. And it can also be used in nursing homes and everything. And some people even call it veterinary slit lamp because we have to use it on our veterinary patients. So the principle behind the slit lamp is that you have a, a, a microscope for magnification and then you have an adjustable light source. All right, and so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to basically make the light source a bright, wide light, and this will allow me to just generally look at the surface of the eye. And so this is what I'm going to be doing right here, is I'm going to gently pry her lids open. Ella's being a good girl. And I'm just going to scan across. I'm going to look at the lids. I'm going to look at the third eyelid. I'm going to get the third eyelid to come up. I'm depressing the globe. I can look at the surface of the cornea and look at the anterior chamber, okay? And for looking at depth perception and to see things like aqueous flare, murkiness of the aqueous humor, I can make a small beam of light. And when I shine that into the eye, it's almost like I have a physiologic slice of the eyeball that I'm looking at. It's almost like taking the eye uh, in the head and putting it under a microscope and looking at the uh, section just like a pathologist would do. This is all well and good if you have a $5,000 slit lamp. What I'm going to basically do now is show you how to utilize the equipment that the average practitioner would have at their practice or on their truck to do the same examination of the external eye and the cornea. So first, for magnification, everyone is familiar with reader glasses. This three diopter lens will allow you to get one third of a meter from the surface of the animal. So that's about 13 inches. Likewise, some people use these Optivisors, and basically this is a five diopter optivisor here, which allows me to focus at an eighth of a meter, or excuse me, a fifth of a meter, which is eight inches. So when I put this on, I can get even closer still and be able to see things in focus, and the close proximity allows me to have bigger magnification. So the next thing we're gonna need is a light source. And uh, you can use your direct ophthalmoscope and just basically use a large spot of light. And what we do is we're going to basically use this as our light source and we're going to shine the light at different angles to what I'm looking at just like we were using the slit lamp. So any light source would work for you uh, with that very simple technique. You could use the Finoff Transilluminator. We do the same thing. Okay, so now let's uh, learn how to utilize our direct ophthalmoscope uh, a little bit more for the even closer magnification and closer looking utilizing what we call retroillumination. The diopter wheel allows you to adjust the different diopters which allows you to get closer and closer to the patient. A 10 diopter lens will allow a person to focus at one-tenth of a meter, which is about four inches, which is double the magnification I got using the Optivisor loop on my head. So if I wanted to look at the surface of the eye from four inches away, basically I put my hand on the, on the halter, gently raise the lids and look through, and I can focus, have a little dust in the tear film here, but I can focus from four inches looking at the surface of the eye. If I want to look at structures deeper into the eye, like the iris, I simply move forward. And now the iris will be in focus because it's a little bit further away from me. If I wanted to look with even more magnification, I could even turn this up to 20 diopter. Now 20 diopter is going to focus at 1 20th of a meter, or 2 inches. So if you were looking for little tiny fine keratic precipitates from a horse that has uveitis, and you want to look at the bottom of the eye and see those little bitty tiny dots that are so important diagnostically, this is how you would do it. You can see that I'm really, really close to the eye 
and things are really, really magnified. Okay, so that's how you would use your direct ophthalmoscope to uh, evaluate things. Another piece of equipment that many people have available that a lot of people like to use, especially large animal practitioners, is actually the otoscope. Now the otoscope, a veterinary otoscope, has a 10 diopter lens and it's going to focus at 4 inches. That's the length of the otoscope uh, cones. And so with, uh, with the otoscope, I can put this on and looking through the lens, I'm going to be able to focus at things at four inches, just like I did with the direct ophthalmoscope. But I'm going to have a lot larger lens to look through. And so I can look at the surface of the eye from four inches away, or I can move in and see the iris in focus at about two inches away. And I have a nice, big, large lens to look through. So many people like to use the otoscope. Okay, so this is uh, both of these uh, direct ophthalmoscope and uh, the otoscope have what we call coaxial illumination. The light is coming through the aperture that you are actually looking at. And so this allows you to uh, also develop uh, a concept called retroillumination. If I shine light into a patient's eye, a, a veterinary patient, dog, cat, horse, cow, you're going to see the bright reflection through their pupil of the tapetum. And anything that is between you and the back of the eye is going to be backlit uh, by the, the light reflecting from the tapetum. So this is a, a very good way of picking up little small opacities in the cornea, the lens, the vitreous, or any other uh, portion of the eye that is between you and the back of the eye. So what I would do here is I could turn the the ophthalmos or the otoscope on and flip the lens out of the way and I could stand back you know a number of uh, a feet a couple of feet and get the reflection or I could flip the lens in and I could look a little closer and by moving around I could see if there was any opacity in the lens against that back lighting or if there was any debris floating around in the vitreous what we call floaters and so this is how you would use the, the process of retroillumination to see things in the front of the eye by them being backlit.